Hello friends, I thought I'd take a few minutes and talk a little bit about rainwater collection and basically ask the question of whether or not it's safe to drink. Uh, there's a few websites out there and basically the consensus is that there's no real consensus on the safety of that water and I think it uh, relates to your particular setup. Uh, there's a lot of concerns with harvesting water from the rooftop and so the idea is, like it says here, caution is the better part of good health. You'll have to look at your system and determine what's coming through the gutters and determine whether or not you need to treat it. Experts out there vary. Uh, they say in some instances that you just can't drink it. You shouldn't use it on your vegetables. You shouldn't even bother with it, they say. Um, from toxicologists, uh, they uh, sometimes suggest that you should just uh, be in uh, alert to things that will go on. And a physician in California had a good one. There are animals on your roof sometimes. Uh, there's a danger of the feces. We have birds, we have reptiles, um, roundworms and other parasites are a particular concern. If you've got shingles, wood shingles, tile, whatever, they contain dirt, mildew, debris, pathogens, and inhib mold inhibitors, glue, and that will get into your rain barrels. The shingles themselves, if you look at your own shingles, you can see that they're dirty. They always need cleaned. Um, the dirt and the mildew is uh, hard to get rid of. And uh, our setup is a metal roof. We had to do this because of the uh, area that we live in. It's a hurricane prone area and we were tired of replacing roofs so we went with this that'll stand 200 miles an hour. Our diverter system is normal. Uh, you can see on some of the edges here we have mold even growing on that. So let's take a look at my first collection vessel here. This is a uh, 55 gallon uh, drum and this is the kind of uh, material that gets in our collection here and you can see there's a lot of debris in the bottom from leaves and just plain dirt. Second stage you can see is pretty clean here. We have a third and a fourth stage that gets progressively cleaner but the idea is even though you can't see anything doesn't mean there's not stuff there. A high-end water filtration system uh, used on turbid water will in fact ruin the filter and it also doesn't remove the soluble toxins to suppress that growth you need to use some bleach in there and the best thing to do is put it in after each rain and you continue to add the bleach to stabilize the readings. You need to maintain something between two and four parts per million for at least 24 hours on this. If your water is turbid the bleach will clean it up. The chloride will continue to be used in the solution as long as there's oxidizable material in the barrel and the free organic material that remains will continue to use it up. The bleach will continue to eat the material in there and you must continue to adjust your bleach concentrations until it stabilizes. This is very important. Don't guess on those chlorine concentrations. I see this over and over. Buy a test kit from uh, Home Depot, Walmart, or somewhere else. Even grocery stores have them and you can uh, accurately see what your chlorine concentration is there. This is a very simple little test kit that you can use. And uh, if it goes up too high, let it sit for a while. Now the water filtration system that we use is uh, based upon a pump that's an RV water pump. It uh, sends water to a 5 micron carbon first stage into a 1 micron reverse osmosis filter a second stage then it goes through a third stage which is deionizer. Now just because you can't see anything doesn't mean it's dirty. This is essentially what you're doing here even though it might be clear it might be containing pathogens like this. So it's a good idea to think about this and a YouTuber um, that is very good about this is Patriot Nurse. You can uh, go to her website and you can check out her videos. That's all today. We'll talk to you later.